Good evening, everybody. This is Robin with another edition of Horror Pop After Midnight. And my guest tonight is, she's a writer and filmmaker, Jay Adams. How's it going, Jay? Yeah, really good. Thanks, Robin. You? Pretty good. Uh, Thank you for coming on. No, thank you. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Well, um, I saw your uh, horror short, Incubus. Oh, my gosh. It was effectively creepy and haunting that's what i got out of it awesome thank you no that's that's awesome to hear that uh that one in particular out of the ones i've done so far was definitely on the the darker side of things so uh, that's definitely where we were going with it so awesome that you get that vibe from it um also um Where'd you film that at? Um, Because you made the that bedroom real creepy, and I love how you did the pitch darkness with the light lighting to make it real. Uh, it just got into my skin just seeing, uh, seeing, <laughs> seeing her like. I mean, you made it. I mean, how she was laying in that bed and all that. I, I could that could really happen to somebody. Yeah, yeah, no, one hundred percent. It was it was completely playing off of, as I say, the. The sort of more medical side of it being sleep paralysis um but yeah just that that idea behind the fact that it is something supernatural um when people go through that type of experience it feels very much realistic you know you can't move there is a presence there so really really wanted to riff off of the idea that that it is a supernatural entity um in terms of the actual uh, bedrooms and just yeah really wanting to play with the shadows and things like that we uh we very recently actually just got a converted barn which um we've done up as a studio to actually build sets a lot of previous things were on location um but with this particular one it was the first one we actually did in the studio so it's all set built so that we could get the lighting exactly how we needed it, you know, the room and stuff for the ideal camera movements um, and the looks that we did really, really pulled it off well. So I was really proud of that. Let's talk about the demon. Um, How'd you come up with the demon with the special effects? I mean, whoever did it, I mean, that demon was like, (laughs) it was just there. Yeah, no, uh, and, and Ed, Ed Griggs, who, who played that, I mean, he was in makeup for for a long time, bless him, um, being airbrushed and all sorts, so he did a phenomenal um, job on that. Um, the the idea, I mean, it's, it's something that's definitely scared me a lot in the past, the look of creatures like that, the really long fingernails, those horrid eyes, very human looking, but just black and in those shadows is just something that always um disturbed me the idea of that so i definitely wanted to do that with this one um it's, it's, it's awesome it's a shame with, with my previous films i worked with amazing um makeup artist joel jones who does a lot of my films she wasn't available for that one um so i actually did the makeup on that one with the assistance of everybody else as i say sort of spraying down ed um and stuff and and all hands on but yeah really really good really happy with with how it looks as the finished finished product i love the score in it too um it played like a character and how you shot it which that's what the vibe i got yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, we do look at a lot of pieces like that with, with the sound, the types of feels that we want. Um, it's actually my husband that did the, the sound um, design on that. So we're quite a local tribe, if you like, of, of, of what we do and make films together. So um, we all, hands on deck, do a lot of different pieces um, to kind of make it happen. Um, and yeah, that, that real sort of knocking creeping effect just to really set this off in a sort of you know in her nightmare world if you like that nightmare that she's in to just set the tone yeah i like how your uh, husband is um part filmmaking with you too so is he mostly like the cinematographer on your films yeah yeah that's 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 his main main role that's what he what he does as i say i, I write the scripts 
Um, he does a lot with me in terms of actually developing them out through the redrafts and things like that. Um, getting another pair of eyes on things is, is always good. So we do a lot of that together. Um, and then cinematography side, all, all him. Um, but it's, it's good that we can sort of, as I say, as a director and a cinematographer, where we just really hash everything out. We know exactly how we're doing this. He gets, takes the ideas there, develops pieces, sees stuff that I maybe don't, vice versa, but we always come to set knowing exactly how we're gonna kind of work together, what the tone is, what the lighting is, and how we're gonna do it. So it's, yeah, it's pretty awesome that we get to work together like that, sort of, as well as being husband and wife, so it's cool. So you um, grew up being a horror fan, getting into like horror. Um, so by watching different films growing up and, you know, having a messed up mind, just like everybody else that watches horror, um, has that gave you any ideas of some of the films you made? Uh, oh, yeah, de definitely, definitely. So, yeah, that, since I was little, um, I was one of, the, one of the weird little kids, you know, <laughs> that, that loved the horror aspects of things. You know, it was, wasn't playing with, Barbies and things like that it was you know the werewolf stuff and how I make this into witches and vampires and you know all the gateway horror stuff that I'm sure many many other people um do ghost bumps you know are you afraid of the dark all the stuff when you're younger growing up um so yeah since since I was little um a lot of that has definitely definitely helped in terms of um what I want the final outcome to be, how I view that into things. I'm that minded anyway. So a lot of stuff, you know, riffs on things I really like, but how can I do it differently? Um, or definitely, definitely nightmares, which for most people are not a good thing. For me, they are a good thing because that definitely helps with the stories that I want to do. Um, husband is constantly telling me how weird I am. <laughs> when I have a nightmare and you expect a horror reaction, I'm like, oh, that was really awesome, and I have to get my notepad and, you know, write that down sort of thing. So, yeah, definitely plays plays into it nicely. Yeah, um, you're a self-taught filmmaker when you got into filmmaking, and, um, you know, you saved up and bought all of your equipment. So uh, how much of a learning experience was that um, teaching yourself how to edit, how to film, how to write a script, how to make a feature? Yeah, no, a um, massive, massive learning curve. As I say, you know, the, the, the love for horror, watching a lot of horror films and things like that definitely gives you a good a good start, a good grounding um, in things and story and stuff. You're used to the types of scares and, again, how you can do that differently, but the actual process of, of each part um is definitely definitely a, a, a learning curve with pieces it's taken taken time um each part is just so different i think what i what i quite like um particularly from doing the writing there's a story on the page you know and whether that that works and you can feel that would work for the film and then you go to actually shooting it and things. And again, you know, you might have to pivot slightly on the day. You might have, again, it kind of reshapes it a little bit more. And then you get to the editing. And again, that's just a whole different bag in terms of how that's then playing out, the different cuts that you can use. And almost, again, another way to just really polish it or again just to really nail down how you do things and how that comes across uh, i love ev every aspect in that it does that it's such a creative process um but yeah no as i say really it's just jumping in jumping in and doing it you know um every script written and then getting feedback i learn more every single film that I make is then learning more tricks with everyone trying to do something to stretch ourselves and learn more um you know if it goes great that that's awesome but there's also bits where you just think yeah I would do this differently next time or this was maybe a better way of doing it so it's, it's 100% I think just jumping in and just hands-on doing stuff has, has, has been definitely the the best way I think I've learned a lot in the short amount of time by just doing. 
That's the best way to be. Um, you did another short too, uh, Unseen Evil. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah. So that that was actually the very first one um, that I ever did. Uh, so as I say, sort of self teaching in the in the writing and things. Watched a lot of webinars, podcasts, writing books. You know, everything I could get my hands on to just sort of self teach. Um, and I then did the script for Unseeing Evil. It was a micro short, so it's three three minutes long. Um, but it was uh, about a little blind boy um, who's actually befriended by a creature. Um, not too dissimilar from the creature in Incubus, actually. So again, there you can tell the sort of creature that, uh, that definitely like there. Um, but yeah, the idea that this creature goes after blind children, um, very, very unaware, it mimics things and stuff so that they're not actually aware that it is in fact a malevolent creature pretending to be their friend um, when it's really not. So I wrote that one. Um, it got really, really good feedback. Um, and just having it sat there on the page kind of wasn't enough for me at that point. I thought, no, I can really see this. I really believe in this. How, how do I make this? Um, so it was literally just getting a group of guys together, crew um, that had done films before, was fully open with them. I've never been on a set before. I've got this idea. I really want to make it. They were really awesome with me. Just literally sort of taught me through the ropes. They'd all made short films before um, to do it. And then when we put it through festivals and stuff, it got a few selections um, it got top 10 on film riots, make film challenge and stuff. So um, it was really, really awesome. Really, really awesome. And immediately wanted to make more. Well, there was no no way I was just stopping stopping there with that one. And that that's the, where it all really started, to be honest. And I've kind of gone, gone from there. So when you first uh, started writing Unseen Evil and filming and all that, uh, what was going through your mind? Were you a little nervous and scared at the same time? What people would thought after you showed the final product? Oh yeah, one one hundred percent. And I I still do now. I still do now with every single film um, that I do. Um, there's almost that that little imposter syndrome, you know, that kind of kicks in where you know you you're just wanting to do something that you really believe in that you really love, you know, sort of thing. Um, but yeah, when, when you get the, you put it out there, you absolutely want the feedback and things like that, but you really just want to make other people proud. You want to make the crew that are working on it and passionate about it as well, you know, proud and things like that. And it's, uh, it's yeah, it's, it's a really, really, really good process. But as I say, it's, yeah, I don't think you ever quite, get rid of those nerves maybe you do i haven't i haven't yet sort of thing but just you know through the passion really with it and stuff and just taking on board what people say to then just keep keep making things better yeah so uh do you see uh incubus in the near future being a feature film do you think can you picture yourself writing a feature film for either incubus or unseen evil uh, yeah, I would 100% uh, love to do that. It is something that I haven't quite done yet, is actually writing a full feature script. Um, but Unseeing Evil in particular was definitely written as a, as a proof of concept um, that I would love to make into a feature. Um, I have actually written um, a part two of that, a much longer short. Um, which hopefully we're going to be filming by the end of the year. Um, again, just to get some more of that backstory in and the real concept and mythology of it. Um, but to actually do it as a feature um, would, would yeah, 100%. Um, I think, as I say, where I've been writing now um, for a couple of years, three years, I'm definitely sort of building things up um building things up in the shorts i'm doing again i love that i can write stuff make stuff and then learn from the actual films and things and sort of slowly working my way up to um to a feature style um piece or an anthology i would definitely love to do an anthology um as well 
with some of the shorts. So, yeah, we'll see. That'd be cool if you made a lot of shorts and anthology. I'm a huge fan of uh, anthology films, too. And I, I'm, I'm also looking forward to seeing, and you know, seeing Evil Part Two when you get done, because um, you got me curious at it. I mean, I haven't seen the first the first film yet, but I would love to see it. I, you know, some micro shorts are pretty good. I've, I've seen a lot of you know micro horror shorts too. Um, also, um, how big is uh, indie horror film making in the UK? Um, yeah, no, I think I think it's pretty. I think pretty decent decent size to be fair i think i'm uh london definitely is the the place to be i think again um there's definitely further down south um is where you'll find a lot of people a lot of studios you know that's really where it is i'm further north i'm in the i'm in the midlands sort of thing so there's definitely um less resources and things that way but again that's kind of why i wanted to get you know the studio that we've got and things so we've got more facilities i would love in terms of other filmmakers and stuff i'm trying to find more people in my area in particular that are trying to do a similar thing and stuff like that um just again to collaborate to band with there's spaces there um to use and things like that so but yeah, on on the whole, I think there's 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 a lot out there um, at the minute, which is really really exciting. To be fair, um, and we all have the means much more nowadays to actually do stuff and things. So I think it's really awesome what's what's coming out. That's impressive. Uh, you made a studio out of a barn and made sets and all that. I mean, dude, that that's just freaking awesome. How long did it take you guys? to transform a barn into a studio and make little sets um it was probably a couple couple of months of a uh, couple of months of graft and stuff just yeah definitely getting it uh, to how we needed it to be and stuff but again it's, it's such a big awesome space i think what i like about it as well is in terms of because it is um structurally a barn you've got that lovely character to it as well it's not you know pristine modern building so to speak but it's got got the character when you're making horror films and things like that having that around you um just immediately gives you that that great sense in terms of that filming space um but no again the, the guy is just jump jumping on again with us to help build it and things like that and build all of the flats that we need building up a huge inventory of, of props and things like that things that we make um as as yeah been really really awesome so again we're just going to keep keep doing more keep keep building on more we've done obviously with incubus you know we've got a few sort of bedroom sets there night room sets and stuff but um we're definitely going to get sort of bigger and better if you like again just keep keep building sort of thing so yeah it's gonna be really really cool i'm impressed man one of these days i'm gonna have to fly to the midlands uk to meet you guys and take a tour of this studio oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely i have to say, i'll send you some pictures and stuff like that that's what i need to get more more stuff on i've built up now some videos some pictures of um, behind the scenes stuff and things like that that I definitely need to, to start getting getting out there and stuff like that and I'll definitely send you some that would be cool I'm excited I'm looking forward to I, I mean that's impressive um, I've talked to other filmmakers that have used a barn for certain scenes where you couldn't even tell it, it was a barn they were filming it I, I, I mean I've talked to filmmakers that have done that but not you know making a whole film studio out of a barn that's just amazing <laughs> yeah, so yeah how how did you come up with the name uh horror house pictures um so it was uh so it was a bit of a, a bit of a again a riff in terms of um two two production houses that i i really really love um and it was blum house and uh hammer hammer horror mm -hmm. so it was very much horror house um just to to, to mix the two sort of thing because again i mean particularly um i love and have done for several years now the things coming out of of blum house 
um hammer horror for me as well obviously being uk um you know to, to to one day sort of be very much that horror space in the uk you know again because i think there's again brilliant things coming coming out but that was so prominent um and you know would would just be a dream with that so it was kind of yeah my my, my two sort of favorite um production companies there in that sort of sense and um yeah taking taking a part of of each so yeah yeah blumhouse and you know uh you know hammer films they do a lot of them uh what's your thoughts about a24 horror yeah no actually i mean again that you know the things coming out they had a different spin on things definitely with that space um and uh, I think it definitely set a little bit of a precedent as well. Almost, I'm seeing a lot of other films, even if they're not A24, that have that very similar tone, um, and particularly the sound design and the music. That very, you know, um, eerie, knocking kind of just very, you know, I'm seeing that quite a lot. I think out of other things as well. So uh, I think they've definitely set i think a bit of a bit a bit of a tone as i say with pieces that are then you know um also doing a very very similar similar thing so uh what other projects are you working on right now um so yeah no as i say got unseen evil part two written um so that's definitely someone one that we are hoping to do um before the end of the year um I am pushing a lot out this year to be to be fair though um, I'm really going for it so we're currently um, also filming um, uh, it's going to probably be about 15 minutes so one of our longer ones that we've done um, bigger cast um, as well on this one that one's called Unbound um, and we should be wrapping that one first week of September um, and I'm already um, writing a Halloween themed film as well because I've always wanted to do one of those. Um, didn't feel we were necessarily ready enough to do it justice previously, but with what we've, you know, say, sort of learned now what we're doing, I sort of set a this year. I'm not. I'm not going another year without without doing one. We're doing it this this year, so um, we're actually gonna be starting to film that in the next couple of weeks and we're going to launch that this halloween as well so that's going to be a quick turnaround that one um so yeah they're they're the next next set um that we've got going so yeah hey it's tis the season it's getting close why not (laughs) exactly exactly um, so, it fires me up more, particularly around this time of year. It definitely gets you fired up more, gets you more in spirits. Everybody else is more in spirits, you know. So yeah. Oh, I bet you're. I bet you're just a big Halloween fan, aren't you? The season, everything. I absolutely love it. That's that's the one thing I've never actually visited America. Um, but you, but America do do it so much bigger and better than most of the UK does. To be fair, they definitely have that, and that's one thing I would love love to see, sort of thing. But we we're, we're in, in our our um, road. We every every Halloween really do the front up massively um, with pieces. We want to have people coming over, really enjoying it, taking the pictures with it and stuff like that. I'm like, yeah. Halloween over over Christmas any any day for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, poor Santa. <laughs> I, know, I know, and it's awesome. I totally respect it. I love Christmas, but no, you can't, you can't, you can't trump uh, Halloween for me. That's great. Yeah, you should. Um, someday in the near future, you guys should come to the states and check out Halloween in America. You'll be like, wow. I mean, we got so many good haunted houses. Uh, a lot of neighborhoods that really, really get into it, you'd be like, going, wow. Yeah, yeah, I'd totally be a kid, kid in a candy shop at that point, definitely. We do do it here, as I say, sort of thing, but it's just, yeah, not not as big. Not everybody really get, gets into it, sort of thing. So, no, I'd love that. 
so where can everybody find you on social media and also seeing uh, when your next uh, projects are coming out? Yeah, so um, in terms of the film's YouTube, um, we, we launch everything through that, that channel. So at, at Horror House Picks um, is, is what it is on there, to find us on there. Um, I'm going to say I'm definitely starting to um, use the community page on there a lot more as well. So again, as I mentioned earlier, a lot more of the behind-the-scenes pieces and things like that um, will be going through there as well. Um, and then we've also got our at Horror House Picks uh, Instagram um, as well on that piece. So, so yeah, they're the, the main ones. Um, I'm pretty much on everything personally and stuff. So, Jay Adams, 89, um, from a personal note. I've definitely got that on, on Twitter as well and stuff. So, yeah, but no, all, always looking for, for feedback, always looking for collaboration just yeah absolutely 100% reach out to me um yeah so um are you gonna um start pushing some of your uh shorts um out to film festivals everywhere as well yeah yeah so I did um I did definitely with the first one as say Unseeing Evil um I didn't launch for a for a full year I held that one back um that did festival run um did do did do decently um nothing really really tough or anything like that but Mm -hmm. it definitely had a decent run for uh for the first one um but yeah most most of the time now as i say what i'm looking for is really um getting the films out there um online um for people because you see them in festivals sometimes and then you just don't see them for a year or sometimes you don't even see them at all mm. sort of post post the festivals and things so um, I'm definitely looking for them to actually go online people have access to them um, so in terms of festivals as I say anything that actually do allow you to also still have that online presence will be you know the ones that I definitely want to want to look out for and also have have that presence and stuff but for me um i definitely like as i say to actually get the stuff out there um as a as a president sort of thing as as well so yeah well that'd be pretty good uh thank you so much for coming on and uh, sharing your story no thank you very much for having me it's been awesome was yeah super excited when you wanted to to reach out and just get me on so no, thank you very much for that well the reason i brought you on i love supporting indie filmmaking and when I saw your film, Incubus, that just blew my mind. I mean, um, I watched it on on your YouTube channel, and I'm sitting there going, man, this film would, this short would do really good in the uh, horror film festival circuit. That's just my opinion, but um, that was just a well-made horror short. I mean, I, I really liked it. No, I, I really appreciate that. That's no, that's really, really awesome to hear. And yeah, no supporting indie filmmakers and things is, you know, it, it is definitely something that, you know, I think we should all, all do sort of more often and things like that. One of the things I want to do with the YouTube channel um, is actually set up some playlists and things as well for other filmmakers um, as well, just to share networks you know get views and things like that as well and stuff so that's another thing i'll be looking out for um there just on my side and anything i can promote of of others and stuff so um but yeah no with with incubus i massively massively appreciate that um and yeah no it's 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 definitely had good feedback from from a lot of people with with that one so yeah as i say i think uh I think we need to, to get it in into some. If, uh, if you don't go for it, you don't know, do you, to be fair, sort of thing. <laughs> so, yeah, awesome. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you.